Hello and welcome to the RCB podcast powered by Kotak Mahindra Bank. At 22 23 if I had gotten 2 crores or 3 crores I would have probably burned burned it all. But obviously I'm a Gujarati so my family wouldn't have let me do that. But uh, as an individual I would have made bad choices with that amount of money. Hopefully next year uh, that changes and uh, I'll I'll be paid well and uh, when I have that money I'll know what to do with that money I'm not going to light it on fire. ये है मेरा ड्राइवर्स लाइसेंस माय मेट्रो कार्ड और ये है मेरा पैन कार्ड हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द आरसीबी पॉडकास्ट टुडे विद मी हर्षल पटेल आई एम गोना बिगिन बाय आस्किंग यू द क्वेश्चन दैट आल्सो हैपेंस टू बी द थीम ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट व्हिच इज हाउ हैज द आईपीएल चेंज्ड योर लाइफ 10 इयर्स अगो वाज द वाज द फर्स्ट टाइम आई गॉट इनटू आईपीएल एंड हाउ आई गॉट इनटू आईपीएल इज इज अगेन अ वेरी फैसिनेटिंग स्टोरी um so i was playing for haryana my first ever ranji trophy season and uh, uh, i had uh, i'd played five games and taken nine wickets so nothing to show for it and uh, then we somehow qualified um, for the playoffs and then i played quarter finals against karnataka and uh, i took a took a eight wicket haul which was uh, which is something that uh, gave me the confidence that you know i can perform at this level and then uh, rcb approached me saying that you know we are looking at you would you be uh, interested in coming for a trial i said of course i would be interested and uh, then uh, we go on to play semi final we uh, we ended up winning that game and we uh, go on to play semi finals and uh, in semi finals again i uh, take a eight wicket haul uh, so two back to back eight wicket uh, eight wicket hauls and uh, then i was uh, i was just sitting around in lali uh, in the middle of that game and uh, avinash vaidya called me and uh, said anil wants to speak with you and it took me it took me a couple of minutes to understand what who he is talking about so then uh, anil kumble obviously came on the phone and uh, asked me if you would, would be interested in uh, joining us if so they offered me a contract straight away and uh, uh, yeah, yeah i i got into ipl and uh, uh, life has not been the same ever since because at that time for uh, for a young 20 year old kid uh, playing ipl was was the most important thing uh, and it was a stepping stone uh, to the indian team so uh, and this journey of 10 years the experiences i've had the ups and the downs more downs and the ups a uh, lot of failures lot of uh, rejection uh, trying to figure out what my game was what am i good at what am i not good at what should i focus on uh, it's given me a lot of uh, lessons in cricket and uh, <clears throat> and lot of lessons in life as well uh, so yeah ipl has changed my life completely um what's your earliest cricket memory can you describe what you felt like as a child playing cricket yeah i loved playing cricket as a child uh, i used to play in the society and i was kind of a troublemaker so my mom decided that i would don't want you to play with these uh, children who are uh, you're basically hooligans <laughs> uh, so my mom said i don't want you to play with these guys and uh, you're also becoming like them so i'll put you in a, a cricket academy so my first day going into the academy and uh, realizing that i'm better than most of the children there even though i have no formal training in cricket and um, uh, that sort of uh, made me feel like you know i'm i'm really good at it and at 13 year 13 years old you you do something well that gives you that feeling of you know you you are the you are the king of everything now yeah. legend <laughs> yeah, i am a legend yeah uh, so that i had that feeling early uh, in the childhood but then obviously like all bubbles they get burst <laughs> at some point in time uh, but yeah uh, early cricketing memory is brilliant i mean i love the game to the bits um, um, my passion for the game hasn't changed uh, ever since i picked up a uh, ball and a bat what is it like to switch between us and india your parents traveling all the time did it impact your cricket at all uh not my cricket but my personal life definitely because uh, in in probably last 10 12 years ever since i started playing professional cricket i have not been able to spend a lot of time with my family with uh, uh with my parents with my wife uh, my now wife who was my girlfriend back then uh 
so my personal life has been uh, greatly affected by by um, cricket and also on top of that uh, my parents living in the US so every time I would finish a tournament and uh, I had uh, the summer off mm. for three months four months I had to go in the uh, go to the US and stay there uh, so that didn't allow me any time to spend with my girlfriend uh, because uh, the moment I got back from US after the summer, I had uh, pre-season camps and all that going on. So, uh, cricket, it hasn't affected much, but uh, my personal life for sure. It's strange, right? I mean, to kind of be um, sent away from the family and you're so young and they're almost deciding for you and they're saying, all right, you're going to continue playing cricket yeah. while we live elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, did that disassociation hurt you as a child? I was very close to my family, like very close to my parents, especially my mom. Um, so when they went to the US in 2008, I was a 17 year old kid and living alone at home. Uh, obviously cleaning my own house, sorting my food. Um, I used to go and eat at those uh, paratha places every day, uh, twice a day. Uh, I would come for practice, uh, eat on the way come back home, clean the house, go to sleep, uh, go to practice again in the evening, finish eating, come back home and sleep. So that was my routine for almost three and a half years. Um, uh, so so yeah, that disassociation, at that time it felt like I'm doing it because I want to play cricket. And uh, obviously my family was super supportive and they never questioned any decision I made. Uh, even at the age of 17, they were like, if you want to play cricket, you stay here. Um, and for them to say that for a 17 year old child uh, I think that that showed me that they have a lot of faith in me uh, and that also told me that I can you know take on this responsibility and uh, and you know uh, do justice to the the decisions that I've uh, that I've made so how old were you when your family took off to the US 17 and they left you behind you whose decision was it to convince you or not convince you or be on board with you or not be on board with you? I think it was very, uh, to be honest, it was an easy decision because at 17s you don't have a lot of factors playing in your mind. At that time, I was like, I want to play cricket. And my parents said, okay, you're going to be here. You have family around you. If you need anything, just call them. Uh, I had my cousins, I had my uncles and aunts and all that. Um, so so I was I was in a secure environment for sure. Uh, but I was living alone um, and uh, managing everything, obviously, playing cricket. Um, so so that decision, I, I don't remember it being a very compli uh, complicated decision. But uh, now when I think of, uh, think of it uh, 13 years after that, after that decision, it feels like how did I make that decision so easily? Uh, and how did my parents actually allow me to take the decision so easily? So yeah, a uh, lot of credit to them to to sort of put so much faith in me. So they moved to the US yeah. and you would go there. Yeah. What did your parents do in the US? So they worked, uh, my father worked at, uh, at an airport, my mother worked at uh, Dunkin Donuts. So your uh, basic uh, blue collar jobs, um, uh, because they didn't have a lot of formal education, uh, uh, struggle with language. Um, so those were the best jobs they could uh, get. Those are the only jobs that are available to those people. And especially uh, we went there in 2008, which was the peak of uh, the financial crisis. Uh, so uh, if you got a job, you were you were the luckiest person in America. Um, so and obviously we didn't realize it at that time. But now when I look at the look at the atmosphere uh, that was in the U.S. at that time, it feels like uh, like. It, it all really fell into place. All the pieces really fell into place. And uh, for for seven or eight years, my mom and dad, they worked uh, probably 16 hours a day, 17 hours a day. Um, and uh, again, blue collar jobs, seven days a week, uh, because in, in our culture, it's uh, it's forbidden to take uh, breaks. Oh, uh, we can't, man, of we course. We can't so. take breaks. Kill ourselves uh, working. Yeah, yeah, kill ourselves working. And they did that for seven years and uh, after that, you know, I was doing well in IPL. I was playing IPL consistently, so I was sort of independent financially and my parents were obviously uh, in, in those seven years, they had uh, gathered enough for, the, for, uh, for themselves and for the future. 
and my brother was obviously doing well in the US so then they decided you know my dad decided my mom was still of the opinion that let's stay here for a few years and work and my dad said no as soon as he got his american passport his citizenship he was like i'm out i'm done and um, yeah he moved back to india my mom moved back after 6 uh, months or 7 months um and they've been retired ever since even that right hashal now so many people who just like kill to get like an american passport yeah you're sitting with your parents having american passports yeah. uh you can apply for one if you want how does that work man i mean you stayed away from it you have an indian passport has it how do you guys decide on that's a how do i put it it's a tactical decision yeah. to say if we take the american passport yeah. then harshal can't play in india no So let's not get in the Indian passport. How did that happen? What was that conversation? So once you get a green card, I don't know, uh, a lot of people are not aware of it. Once you get a green card, you have to stay in the US for five years to be able to apply for citizenship. Um, so I I never had that option. I couldn't stay in the US for five years uh, at a time. Um, and uh, so so that was never on cards for me. And also obviously, if I get an American passport, then I play in the IPL as an overseas. which was i was not finding a place in the team as an indian so <laughs> playing as an overseas was a uh, was sort of far fetched um so and and also that that has never been uh, something that i aspired to um, the american passport or whatever it was whatever perks that came with it uh but uh, my my every decision i've made since i was 17 years old um in my memory i've been around i want to play cricket um uh, so anything that helped me play cricket but become a better cricketer um i i, I obviously chose that over uh, anything else so was that always the dream growing up as well i want to play cricket and do nothing else yeah i think i realized that at uh, 17 because uh, you know you're in um, you're amongst a bunch of uh, peers who are uh, competing uh, with you and against you and you realize that you're you're better than them you know you obviously have some talent you obviously yeah. have some uh, skill which is superior to all your uh, peers and then you realize that you know i can make something out of it um, that i didn't realize until uh, i got picked for um, under 19 india uh, to play world cup in new zealand um, but once i once i realized that then i thought you know um, the only thought was how do i become a better cricketer now how do i uh, whatever because i was dominating junior cricket and um, to switch from junior cricket to senior cricket and professional cricket it took me a little while to understand the the intricacies and uh, the things i needed to work on and also like i I've, i've always been someone who wants to try new things so that consistency of thought the consistency of uh, you know sticking to your game Uh, and obviously getting better as you go on but i i was i was always trying to uh, get better in in things that i was uh, i was not good at um, so so that was something that i i learned at uh, 27 28 that these are the things that i can do so if i pay more attention to these things then i'll 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 find my place in in any team but if i try to do things that i don't do well um and focus more on that rather than things that i can do well uh, it's not going to go well for me and it it took me about 7 8 years to learn that lesson so um who are the people who played with you in the under 19 world cup uh all these guys kl mayank mandy mandeep singh uh, ashok menarya jaydev onatkar uh, sandeep sharma a lot of these guys sort of netra holkar who's leading us cricket right now um all of uh, all of us were uh, teammates you and rcb are quite a combination yeah you started here then they traded you to delhi for a bit and yeah. then you came back again yeah what is this strange relationship yeah this was very surprising like to be very honest like i spent 6 years of uh, of my initial ipl career with rcb and then i played 3 years for delhi and then when they traded me this year i was very surprised to be honest because uh, i thought uh, delhi will keep me as a as a as a backup option I don't think they'll let me go, but uh, luckily they decided to let me go. And RCB was, uh, uh, from what I heard, they were very keen on bringing me back here and giving me this role of uh, death bowler. Yeah. And uh, and that obviously, as as everyone knows, changed my my career. ये है मेरा driver's license, my metro card, और ये है मेरा fan card.
it's strange because you're the same guy who was with RCB and you were sent back home. Yeah. What year was it and what happened? 2017, I think. At that time, it was common practice to send people home who were uh, not in scheme of things uh, to play the game. Uh, so in 2017, I, I think after half the tournament was over, um, they sent me back home. They said, uh, "We'll call you when we need you." And um, that was like the epitome of rejection. Uh, you get rejected uh, in this uh, profession every day. Every time they pick eleven, and you're not part of it. It's it's a rejection, right? Um, but uh, not even being part of the squad of 22, 23 people. uh and being sent home and watching your team play on tv uh, and everybody asking you back home why are you here why are you here why are you not with the team what happened are you injured or what and you don't you don't really have an answer right uh, so so that was kind of a kick in the gut and uh, then obviously rcb was not doing really well that season and i think after 9th or 10th game they realized that we are not going to qualify so I kept texting uh, Vittori, saying that you know, you guys have nothing to lose. Just give me an opportunity. Give me an opportunity. I kept saying that, uh, and luckily for the last game, they called me back. Uh, we were playing against Delhi in Kotla, and uh, I played that game uh, again. Didn't start well because I was so nervous because I ha- I hadn't played a single game in the season, and uh, I was sent back home, and and all those things were playing on my mind. but um, again i i i stuck there and uh, uh eventually won the game for the team i was man of the match in that last game and uh, so so that was again uh, an assurance to myself that you know if i he- keep my head down keep doing my thing keep working on my skill things will fall in place um uh, so no matter what your philosophy is not no matter what you believe in uh you need a little ass- assurances uh, throughout the way uh, throughout the process to sort of keep believing in it just a little boost uh, boost every once in a while um so so that was a there was a massive boost for me uh, saying that you know i want to do my thing i want to keep my head down and work on my game and uh, eventually things will fall in place it's incredible right we've spoken to so many people on this podcast and the first thing that the striking thing that everybody talks about is the money uh in your case you've been in been the no indian money. premier league or the base premier league you've yeah. just played for 10 years on the base price yeah. yeah does it kind of drive you nuts looking at people around you making like crores and whatever and then you're like dude why am i still stuck at this does that happen to you yeah 100% like that was uh, that was again a huge um, to be very honest it was a huge um, disappointment for me because obviously at the end of the day you know you're playing this game for the love of the game and uh, to prove to yourself that you know you're good enough to play this game at the highest level but uh, eventually if you if you're giving this game the peak of your life um, by the end of it all you you want to have something to show for it in your bank account right um, because financial security is uh, very very important um i don't like people saying that uh, you know i don't worry about money you should worry about money because money is a tool to freedom right um you you worry about money for the right reasons not for the wrong reasons not because you want to buy a ferrari and show it off to your friends or you want to buy a rolex and show it off to your friends um you you think about money in a in a way which is which can get you to that financial freedom and then you don't have to make decisions around um, you don't have to base your decisions on whoever pays me more i will go there uh, even if it makes me miserable um, so so that was always in in the back of my mind and uh, yeah 20 lakhs for uh, for 10 years uh, yeah it's it's been it's been pretty slow but uh, uh, on the positive side it taught me uh, how to be frugal um, the things that are important I mean, you don't have what you spend bro <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and and obviously be very smart very intelligent about how you invest your money and uh, where you spend your money you spend on experience not on things and uh, uh, it teaches you all the right things when you when you don't get paid a lot uh when you don't have that financial sense if at 
ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री फाइट गॉटन टू करोज और थ्री करोज आई वुड हैव प्रॉब्ली बर्न बर्न इट ऑल बट ऑबियसली हम गुजराती सो माई फैमिली वोट नेव लेट मी डू दैट बट बट या इफ इफ आई एज एन इंडिविजुअल आई वुड हैव मेड बैड चॉइसिस विद दैट अमाउंट ऑफ मनी सो hopefully next year uh, that changes and uh, i'll i'll be paid well and uh, when i have that money i'll know what to do with that money i'm not going to i'm not going to light it on fire it's insane right because this is an environment that the moment you walk in you look at the most successful guy in the room and you go he's got a watch he's got a cap he has sunglasses i'm going to buy all of these and grow a beard and wear tattoos but it works for him but <laughs> you know you, you don't have a tattoo uh you do have a cap but i'm saying <laughs> you know it's it's crazy i've never seen you to be that guy yeah. when you look at them and when you look at the other scorpion and you really sometimes wonder what the what's going yeah. on here does it ever happen in your head no like I, i i don't know this was this was definitely an innate thing in me i was i was always someone who wanted to be different um so conformity is something that always eluded me like i wanted to stay away from conformity and that allowed me to uh, develop a mindset where uh, i wanted to chart my own path i wanted to create a personality which is uniquely mine mm. and uh, obviously you have influences around you and you learn from them and you try and replicate uh, some of the great people around you mm. but at the end of the day if you if you can't hold your own uh, in your thoughts in your uh, in your opinions um, then then you're again part of that uh, you're just another brick in the wall uh, so so i always uh, always had that thought that you know i want to i want to be a sovereign person i want to be a free person i don't want to be an extension of someone else's personality uh, yeah there are norms that you don't have to conform to um uh, this season right it's been quite a roller coaster uh, you've taken a hat trick you've uh, recorded the best ever spell by a bowler in this tournament i think uh not in the tournament but uh, but yeah that five wicket haul the oh, first yeah. ever five wicket haul against mumbai correct first ever five wicket haul and you get hammered for 37 runs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so quite so that's a definition of a roller coaster <laughs> dude i mean like what is it about the format of this game that you like yeah it's precisely that right it Yeah, it keeps giving you that reality check every once in a while so when you get uh, clobbered for 37 you feel like what, what has this happened like and in that over like i i tried to do everything right i had my plans i couldn't execute a single delivery not a single delivery i executed and i executed probably one and uh, siraj dropped a catch on that delivery <laughs> so i was like no this is yeah this is not going my way today so that uh, that gives you a little bit of perspective that you know you're not the top dog uh, you may be in one or two games then but you have to come back to reality you again have to keep your head down and do your work what's been your most memorable or satisfactory wicket one that you took and said wow i did this and how did that sort of uh, how did you plan it what happened yeah that pollard's wicket in in that hat trick mm. um, that was very gratifying because uh, again it's karen pollard right one of the you you dread that guy when you're bowling at death um, so we had decided to bowl wide to him because uh, the the offside was uh, quite larger uh, in dimensions than the leg side and he can clear any boundary uh, with ease uh, so we decided that we're going to bowl wide yorker sir so i said okay i'll bowl wide yorker sir and then suddenly i thought you know he's not expecting me to bowl in stumps so he's going to walk across and whenever the batsman walks across he creates a blind spot on his leg side um so i decided to bluff uh, i decided to bluff and uh, i bowled a i bowled a perfect uh, loopy so ball that i bowled and the execution was spot on and he, he completely missed it um so get like getting the batsman out um like they try to hit you the ball they don't really connect the ball goes up in the air and someone catches it again it's a it's a wicket it feels great you've deceived the batter but uh, it doesn't feel as good as something like this where you where you didn't allow where where the batsman was not even in the picture 
he was completely outfoxed so so that wicket was uh, was definitely very gratifying for me so t- tell me this how different is the perception so when you take a hat trick or when you take five in a game versus getting hit for 37 is the perception within the team and outside the team how different is it yeah, it changes it changes like this people who hold you in very high regard and uh base all their uh, expectations on you and suddenly it deflates uh so it's like a stock market right one one day it's like hitting the peaks and next day something happen covid happens and it it all crashes it all comes uh, crumbling down so that's what happened in uh, in that game and uh, but uh, but again that's what something that really helped me go through that uh, and come out of uh, come out of that uh, still intact not broken was the experience of these 10 years and knowing that this is a pendulum this is going to swing both ways and uh, um obviously it's easier said than done but you don't really pay attention to what people say you can't do that if you do that you're setting yourself up for failure um uh, so so my focus was uh, every time i analyze a game i only look at two aspects of it one is planning one is execution so was i wrong in my planning no i wasn't was i wrong in my execution yes so i went to the net so i started bowling yorkers again i started figuring out uh, that you know we were playing a day game uh, mm. there was a day game in mumbai mm. in 40 degrees heat and so so that is that weather is not uh, made for outdoor sport and uh, by the time i came on to bowl the fourth over i was cooked i was extremely tired and yorker takes a lot of effort to uh, to execute i couldn't do it so so the physical aspect of it was one part it's not like i i had lost my skills uh, suddenly so i knew that i had skills uh, it was just one physical aspect of it and uh, i also realized that uh, there are going to be days where i won't be execute won't be able to execute the things that i do execute really well so then what is my escape how do i get that guy off strike so that was there was a very valuable lesson does the pressure get the better of you what happens yeah it used to it used to for sure because again we 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 let our uh, let our mind run ahead of the situation we start thinking about the future and that's where you that's where you lose the game mm. so pressure is just that right you're not in the moment you're not in the moment you're thinking like i'm defending four runs of the last ball what if i concede four runs and lose the game for the team what are people going to say and uh, am i going to get dropped and uh, if you're playing a playoff game this is the end of the tournament if i concede four runs so if you if you allow your mind to go in that space then you're done then you've lost the game before you bowl the ball uh but um, at the same time if you if you actually focus on what the batter is trying to do what is the best delivery to bowl at this time and uh, how how are you going to execute it um, so as a bowler i have my checklist of you know i want a controlled run up uh, my my loading uh, which angle i want to create um, so at the top of the mark i'm thinking all these things i'm checking all those boxes and uh, if you if you are in that uh, space mind space then inevitably you will more often than not execute and the batsman can still get away with it and still get the best of you but uh, you know that you've done the best you could do you've done this all your life right yeah. this is the only thing you've done all your life uh the scrutiny while you were growing up was probably inexistent except for your coaches yeah. and then you're suddenly under the guise of the entire world like yeah. the entire world is looking at you you've gone through something like this yeah. where you've been lauded and trolled yeah. there are other people who've been lauded and trolled do you ever walk up to a guy and be like bro chill just do well next time they will change the tide will completely change or does it actually impact your mental health what happens it's not a very mean thing but uh, something that gets to me is people saying that i've been lucky taking 30 wickets in the season I'm like okay how how does that happen how do you take 30 wickets in a in a tournament like IPL by sheer luck how does that happen and uh, what a lot of people don't really know is i whenever i have my meeting with a bowling coach with griff i tell him exactly what i'm going to do and exactly how i'm going to get the guys out and i do that i get them out but these are the things that really don't get out in in the public sphere 
so they they think that he is just running fast and bowling slow and getting wickets it's that simple for them so it feels like how what how is this happening how is this guy taking three wickets every match but but there's a process behind it i'm i'm not just running and bowling and getting wickets it doesn't happen that way so so yeah if you if you pay attention to that and if you allow it to uh, take your mental energy if you focus on that then then yeah it will 100% affect you and it can be debilitating like it what some of the comments on instagram these people are professionals all these trolls are professionals man they they know how to push your buttons yeah. and they will say things which are very very close to like the the truth uh but it's not true but they're very close so you you start thinking in your in your head that what if this guy is right what if i've just been lucky and then you go back to uh, go back to your room go back to reality and think no not not really and that is not true <laughs> um so yeah uh and again i've i've always believed in uh, in the fact that if you if you get um, pumped up by the praise you will get uh, depressed by the trolls um so so reject all that reject the praise uh again it's a very it, it sounds very rude and very offensive to say that you know reject the praise uh, but uh, uh that's the only mechanism to to deal with this uh because if you if you read good comments about your performances and and get a kick out of it then you're going to get depressed by reading the negative stuff yeah. for sure ye hai mera driver's license my metro card aur ye hai mera fan card you can't take the uh, bouquet to the head and the brick bat to yes. the heart 100%. it is what it is it's yeah. written there so you appreciate it. appreciate when people say nice things about you that you know if someone says uh, for example ellen wilkins uh, message me uh, back in amdavad the the way i spoke about um, um, about that uh, 37 run over in amdavad right after the chennai game what did you say uh I said uh, you don't have to go down the rabbit hole of thinking you know I got hit for 37 and uh, once you go down that rabbit rabbit hole there's no coming back so I'm only focus on the skills that I can execute and he said that there was there was very good to hear and I was very eloquent and and all that so that I I really appreciated him reaching out to me uh, he doesn't have to do it right but I appreciated reaching out uh him reaching out to me and uh i i i was very happy that he did uh but at the same time you can't expect people to do that all the time if it comes your way accept it with open arms but you can't expect that people are going to say nice things about me before the tournament began uh all these experts have uh, their own shows and their twitter accounts and all that so they were all predicting uh, starting 11s of uh, all the ipl teams i was none of the experts had me in their starting 11 none of them and uh, but but at the end of the day i knew what i could do they don't know they are working on very limited information they've not seen me bowl in the nets they've not seen me do my thing they've not seen how my skills have evolved yeah so whatever uh, judgment they are passing they are passing on basis of on the basis of very limited information whatever they see on tv which is not a lot you don't see the the wheels turning on the tv you just see the see the machine working that's all uh, so yeah you you take it with a grain of salt you you've essentially gone from being this guy who's been in the team unnoticed around to suddenly having the audience's ears wherever you go like literally you can see it at a team event you can see it uh, among the commentators you know the world isn't a fair place yeah. uh, until you actually have to snatch your credit and be like this is mine uh, are you a little more cynical of the world or are you like nah it's okay the world's like that how, how do you perceive it i'm i'm very realistic about uh, how the world operates and 
again i have a i have a very simple rule that i have very low expectations of things that are not in my control and very high expectations of things that are in my control mm. so that again brings me back to this conversation that you know uh even if you take 30 wickets in 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 the league phase people are going to say you've been lucky mm. uh people have have said that about virat kohli and ms dhoni and sachin tendulkar so who am i they're going to say it about everyone um and uh, that's their job so i don't pay i don't pay attention to that but yeah uh, in in my in my head uh, and i've always uh, uh seen my performances as uh, uh from from my own perspective whether i satisfied my own standards mm. and in this tournament i have satisfied my own standards and i have exceeded my own standards mm. for sure mm. So so that's what gives me a lot of satisfaction and gratification that whatever I've worked for has eventually come to a place where I can say you know whatever I did was right even if it took me a little longer to get to where a uh, lot of people reach at 27 28 uh, it took me a couple more years but I can say this sitting on the table that I did this entire thing by myself I had no mentors at all no cricketing mentors whatever i did whatever processes i developed uh whatever issues i solved mental physical uh, all that i did it by myself with the help of whatever information is out there uh but i did it uh in my in my own way and uh, in my, on my own accord it, it, life happens you eventually sort of grow with it right so what's the uh, ultimate dream bro is it to play for india or What's the dream? The right thing to say is to play. Uh, the dream is to play for India. Obviously, that's if if and when that happens, it's gonna be one of the greatest uh, days of my life. Uh, but at the same time, I've come to this place uh, with one goal and one goal in mind only: that wherever I play, whichever team I play for, at whatever level, I want to make a positive impact. on the game if i'm not playing i want to make a positive positive impact on the people who are playing the game help them in whatever way i can running the drinks whatever however i can make them comfortable to go out and do their job which i did for 10 years like whenever i didn't play i made sure that i ran around uh, on the field to make everyone feel comfortable like when they needed a sip of water i i was there um, Uh, i took that responsibility very seriously so so that is that has been the dream and uh, that will always be the dream to to make a positive impact and win games for the team so when you retire what do you want people to remember you as as a man of method uh because i do feel that uh, methods are very important in life in whatever you do for success mm-hmm. so figuring out your method uh, of success things you believe in things you don't believe in things you completely stay away from mm-hmm. uh so so i've always developed my life around around a method mm. and uh, that method for me is like i said i want to make an impact i want to make an impact i want to keep my head down i want to work on my game i want to work on myself and wherever i get an opportunity i want to make an impact and in in that process when i become <clears throat> when i become successful when i have a voice of power um i want to help people uh learn all these uh, principles and uh I want to I want to lend my hand to to whomever needs it uh, and help them in um, so so I I always try and make a point where after the game where uh, when we have our get togethers and all that if someone has had a particularly bad game I'll go and sit with them uh, because those are the people who are in most need of that uh, those those couple of words or even even uh, just going and sitting there because uh, they usually don't get any attention uh that's unfortunately the world we live in uh so so i make sure that i do that and that's how i want to be remembered so you got hit for 37 you sat by yourself or with just <laughs> no that yeah no 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 not this season but uh, yeah seasons before that yeah, yeah. um i know i mean it's great that you say you want to kind of make a difference and you want to lend a hand but would be in the us Ahmedabad, Lali, Bengaluru. Where is home? Because you seem to be a part of all of these. 
and all of these seem to be a part of you and and somehow you can't separate either where is home home will always be amdavad Uh, um, but uh, first home is Ahmedabad for sure. Second home is US for sure because that's where family lives. Um, and then I've spent so much time in Lali. Uh, I have uh, so many good memories and bad memories of uh, of that place. Uh, so that place will always have a special place in my heart. Um, but yeah, that those lines are very blurred. Uh, but yeah, Ahmedabad will always remain home. Harshal, we've kind of gone through an incredible journey, right? And you've grown up with this league, and the league's grown with you. Yeah. I want to circle back to where we started from. How has the IPL changed your life? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, incredible story, uh, individually. Incredible story uh, of the league, and how many lives uh, it has changed. How it has changed Indian cricket forever. Uh, where indian cricket is right now is probably because of ipl um and uh, i really hope that what i had in this league the opportunities that i got in this league to become a better player to earn money to secure my future um i hope that the next generation has far more better opportunities and this league keeps growing and uh, keeps lifting people out of uh, it has lifted a lot of people out of poverty to be very honest yeah. so it i i really hope that it keeps giving india that that engine engine room of uh, high quality cricketers um i hope it keeps being that engine room thank you man this is awesome cheers Catch the RCB podcast powered by Kotak Mahindra Bank on Spotify, Gana and Apple Podcasts.